Hey! Every time I check the comments on my videos, I see a lot of people from so many different places. And like I always said, I love being able to simply start a conversation with random people about something we all love, video games. No matter where you're from or how old you are, there's always something new to find out. And trust me, you guys already taught me a lot. From Bloody Roar to one of my new favorite series ever, Twisted Metal. But I always like to do my part and show you something you might not be familiar with or maybe just never cared about. Since I started the channel, I always wanted to make this video, but I never did, simply because I thought that people might not be interested in it or it would take me just way too long to make it. But today's the day, because I was looking over the internet and this is a series I truly love, but I don't see nearly enough people talking about it. So here we are with Super Bomberman, also known as one of Blue Tag's favorite series. Oh, and uh, Bomberman R2 is coming out in September, so... Uh, there's that. So for today, we are only going to talk about the Super Bomberman games, meaning the only Bomberman games that came out on the Super Nintendo. Not counting Panic Bomber, which is a puzzle game with a Bomberman theme, and B Daman, which is another puzzle game, but this time you have to detonate bombs on the screen. A uh, cool concept, I guess, but not what I expect from Bomberman. Far to the north of Bomberman's hometown, Peace Town, lies the modern metropolis Diamond City. There, the evil Carrot Diamond and his cohort, scientist Dr. Mook, are holding a robot tournament with robots specially designed for their combat and offensive capabilities. Hoping to steal Bomberman's advanced combat capabilities, Diamond has created a fake Bomberman to go to Peace Town and kidnap the real Bomberman. Aware of Diamond's plot, Black Bomberman heads out alone to face the fake Bomberman. But Black Bomberman is defeated and his castle is taken. Somehow Black Bomberman escapes and seeks refuge with White Bomberman and warns him of Diamond's evil plan. Soon wave upon wave of enemy robots begin their advance toward Peace Town. Now our two heroes must join forces to overthrow the evil Diamond. Of course, that's just in the manual though, so you don't get any cutscenes for it. Welcome to one of the most cheerful menu screens ever. While far from my favorite, this one sets you up pretty well. The game starts with the overworld and the six zones you're gonna go through. You start in Peace Town, Bomberman's hometown, and then move on to other places. The first zone is mostly easy. If you don't know how Bomberman works, you control this little guy and you can press A to set a bomb. You can move around and set bombs near these blocks to destroy them. These are unbreakable and part of the background. While breaking these blocks, you can find items hidden under them, so keep an eye out for power-ups. You have bomb upgrades, like being able to set more bombs at once, having a stronger bomb, which makes the fire go further around, and even a remote bomb, which might be everyone's favorite. You can set a bomb with A and it's only gonna explode when you press B, it's really useful. Besides that, you can find other power-ups, like a boxing glove that lets you punch bombs, the kick that lets you kick bombs around and press X to make them stop somewhere, block and bomb passer which lets you pass through walls and bombs, super bomb which will make your bombs pass through walls and enemies, and maximum explosion which increases the range of your bombs to the max. There's also school items which will cause bad effects, like making Bomberman set bombs automatically non-stop or lowering your bomb range to a minimum and other stuff. You'll find a lot of different enemies in this one, even though most of them do mostly the same. They run around waiting for you to kill them. Oh, and keep in mind, this is how you finish a level. You enter a portal and it moves to another level, but you can only do that after you defeat every enemy. Uh, at least in this game. If a bomb hits the portal, it'll make more enemies come out of it. And not only your bombs, but there are enemies later in the game that are literally more bombs. And they can explode around the portal just to screw with you. You go through different theme zones, getting power-ups and upgrading your Bomberman. So at the last level of each zone, you fight a boss. The first boss is a big guy with a hammer. He goes around trying to hit you with it and it's probably the easiest boss in the game. He's extremely slow and the range is not very good. 
In the second zone you get a clown, which matches the circus theme of the zone. Every time you hit this one, he changes directions and throws... Uh, I don't know, glitter at you? Yeah, Bomberman is kind of weird. In the third one, you go through a robot remodeling factory. Uh, whatever that means. But yes, it looks pretty much like a factory. In this one, you fight Dr. Mook. He keeps throwing missiles at you, but can only move left and right. It's actually pretty easy, and after you defeat him, different Bombermen come out of the walls to cheer you, and apparently you free them from working at the factory. However, Dr. Mook escapes and you go after him in Zone 4. The Robot Tournament Qualifier Dome. In this one, you have to fight your way through some levels and a boss that rubber bends around. It's pretty simple, but it can screw you up if you're not paying attention. Zone 5 is a special one. Robot Tournament Grounds. You fight Mecha Bombermans created by Karat Diamond and Dr. Mook. There aren't any blocks to break in this one and it's strictly a fight against other mechas. Each time you defeat one, another one appears and you fight one after the other and against the time, which kills you if it runs out. After defeating all the basic mechas, the lights start flickering and the audience disappears. After that, a golden mecha bomber is brought by Karat and Mook. You'll need to hit him multiple times and he has upgraded bombs. It's not that hard, but it can be pretty hard, especially if you're not prepared for it. The last stage is Diamond Tower. You slowly fight your way up to the tower for your final confrontation with Karat and Mook. At the end, you fight a spider robot that you have to hit when it opens its eye. It keeps throwing random bombs every time it stops, so you have to be careful. And after you defeat it, a pod comes out. And honestly, this one took me a minute to understand. They keep floating around the level throwing skulls and bombs can't hit them. I believe the only way you can win this fight is by having a boxing glove and hitting them with a bomb, which was the way I did it. But every time you lose a life, you also lose the glove. So you have to wait and see if you can find a glove after minutes of running around waiting for him to throw something useful. It can get annoying and tense. And after you defeat him, the tower is destroyed and the land is saved. Bomberman cheer and the credits roll. You see some Bomberman art, and that's it. It's a very simple game, even for Bomberman in general. Oh, obviously though, I didn't talk about the music. <laughs> it's amazing. Really though, they reuse themes again in other games again and again, but it would be a shame if they didn't. I don't think there's a Bomberman game with bad music. Oh, also, the battle mode. Get three friends and go into battle mode. It's four Bombermen fighting each other with the same rules as in the campaign. Upgrade your Bomberman as fast as possible and fight others to win. Probably one of the best party games ever made. It can be extremely chaotic at times, but that's only part of it. Oh, and play the campaign with a friend. If you can, it's pretty much canon. Super Bomberman 2. This is easily the one I have the least experience with for one simple reason. There is no co-op in this one. I don't know why they removed it, but I didn't want to go anywhere near this game as a kid because of that. The story here is that a ship carrying five different cyborgs come down to Earth, supposedly built by aliens who plan to take over the universe. And for that, they want to capture Bomberman. Even though he tries to fight them off, he's captured and taken to a prison cell. And that's where the game starts. It's honestly crazy to see how fleshed out this game got after the first one. Like I said, yeah, it sucks that it doesn't have co-op, but finally playing this one made me see how much they evolved in the series with only one game. You start in the castle stage, where your first boss is Magnet Bomber. Everything here starts simple again, blowing up enemies to open the gates for the next level. Graphics got better. The backgrounds look miles ahead of the last game, being way more animated and even having some reflections to them. Uh, well, not real reflections, but still. There's an overhauled HUD with your items, score, lives and a timer. Which before used to be only some squares that you have to figure out what they were supposed to be. It is a bit useless though. You have so much time for each level that you never run out. Really. There's some new items in this one, like the power glove. It makes so you can pick up bombs and throw them around. It's probably one of the best items in the game since they nerfed the kick. The super bomb, which is the one that passes through blocks, now looks like this. Which is the standard to this day. But the icon looks wrong. I, I don't know, maybe it was a last minute change. Your first boss is Magnet Bomber. Whenever he sets a bomb, it gets pulled towards you. Not very difficult, it sounds harder than it is. He then runs away and gets into a mecha, which is 
probably the slowest boss in any Bomberman game. <laughs> I mean, the normal fight was harder than this one. For the second zone, you go through Red Hot Stage. It has blowing flames as breakable blocks that can be light back up after a while, furnaces that light up and burn whatever it's in its path, and some ground blocks that have to be moved by a blast, making for some puzzles later in the game. I I'll get to that though. Fire Bomber himself has a power glove, and that's his whole deal. He throws bombs at you. It can be a little bit harder than Magnet, but it's still pretty easy. The second phase though, he keeps throwing these rockets upwards that fall down and explode on the field, but it also hurts him. So you can win this fight by doing absolutely nothing. Uh, really, it's that easy. For the third zone, I had to look up online, because the manual doesn't even tell me the name of the zones anymore. <laughs> I think they got tired and just gave up on it. Amusement Park Stage. It is carnival themed and has a lot of water in it. A lot of water in it. And here's where I stopped liking this game. They tried putting some platforming into it, so you have these yellow squares in the ground that makes you jump. Which, okay, fine. But then you notice that it's not a simple hold the z-pad to go where you wanna go kind of jump. It's more like hold it for a certain amount of time to go further or nearer. And they knew this was busted, because that's all this level is, only jumps. There's only three enemies in the entire level and a huge gap of water that you have to go through. And it does not help that the game has some insane slowdowns. I mean, really, the music keeps playing just fine, but depending where you are in the level, the game starts running extremely slowly, like at 30% speed. And it's extremely noticeable. I was able to ignore it most of the time because of how much new stuff they packed into this one, but when you get to this part, every flaw starts showing up really quickly. I've seen that level 3-6 intro more times than I've seen your mom last week, so good luck getting through this one. Your boss is Pretty Bomber, which is probably someone's waifu these days. She has some heart bombs that keep moving around the level when she sets one, but again, it keeps hitting herself, making the fight pretty easy. The second phase is with... Uh, this? I might have to make a Bomberman boss tier list. This and the clown one are just scary. This one doesn't do a lot, it just spins and move around, it doesn't even get a higher range. Zone 4, the factory stage. These are probably the coolest looking levels in the game. You can see mazes moving around in the background while you're fighting the one you're at. Thank you Bomberman, very cool. Oh yeah, you can get extra lives by collecting these mini Bombermans in some levels. Pretty weird, but <laughs> sure. You fight Brain Bomberman in this one. Uh, I guess they were running out of ideas. He has remote bombs, but extremely small fires, which makes him absolutely useless. And no, that's not a dick joke. For the second phase, he turns into a big mecha Bomberman that looks like the one from Star Parodia. Uh, don't ask me. He moves around and throws big bombs that explode in the area around it. And he's gone. Zone 5, the final zone. It's called the Dark Stage. It takes place in the dark, as you can see. Or maybe not. You have to go around the level trying to find the light switch that makes the enemies also move slower. It's pretty annoying if you ask me. It makes it hard to see and I wouldn't call it fun. It's probably my least favorite zone in the game. It has some cheap deaths, like look at this. You just spawned and you have a second to react. So you think, alright I'm gonna run up then. Oops, they hit an invisible bomb there. Seriously, the last stations in this game will make you rage because of how cheap it is. Either that or they'll have you slowly going around this part with hidden bombs that only appear when you get close to them. So you have to slowly make your way around this path, blowing the blocks away, then blowing the hidden bombs, then blowing the blocks, then blowing the hidden bombs, then blowing the blocks, then blowing the bombs. It, uh, it kind of reminds me of your mom. Plasma Bomber, the last boss in the game. He's basically a fully upgraded Bomberman that you have to fight. He can throw bombs, kick them, whatever you can think of. Still not very hard though. And for the second phase you have this mecha that keeps throwing ghosts at you. They can't be destroyed so you have to plan ahead not to let them get to you. Plasma Bomber also charges at you, which makes it harder to deal with the ghosts, so plan even more ahead. After that, Plasma gets out of the mecha to fight you and gets hit in the ass by an arrow, destroying his back. You fight a big alien eyeball, and the way you do that is the same as in the original. You need to throw bombs at him, only setting them down won't work. After a few tries, all you need is timing, and the boss won't be able to move. 
The ship starts exploding and Bomberman is thrown away into space, killing him in the process. I'm, I'm kidding, after the credits you see him fall into the other Bomberman hands. The music is pretty good, but different. Seems like they tried going a different way with this one, but it still has some pretty good tunes. Battle mode is fun! You can use the select button to pick more Bomberman colors instead of being stuck to one depending on the controller you pick. It's basically the same as the original, but bombs are now colored and after you win, you get not only cutscenes but a starter item and become Golden Bomberman. It's really broken though. If you get a power glove, you can instantly kill other players before they can start playing. Not a bad game, but hard to put as high as my other favorites. There's just too many slowdowns, too many annoying things, but it's clear that they worked hard in this one when comparing it to the original. A lot changed visually for the best, but at the same time... Uh, damn, no co-op? What were they thinking? Super Bomberman 3. This one I knew was good, but I wasn't sure how good. The story here is that Professor Bugler, the creator of the Fight Bad Bombers, repairs them in order to invade the Bomber Nebula. The Bomber Nebula is composed by five different planets, and in each planet there's a supercomputer of the United Planet Federation that helped maintain order and peace. But they were stolen and sealed by the five bad bombers. So to save the Bomber Nebula, Bomberman is called by the United Planet Federation. Yeah, so the lore starts to thicken here. Zone 1 is called Timber Tree. If there's a name for each world, I have no idea. Things work a bit different this time around. You have to destroy all these different switches throughout the levels to open the container with part of the computer's chip. And after you collect 4 pieces, you fight a boss in that planet. The first one is Magnet Bomber, controlling Bacalon. A giant tanuki that turns into a fire thing and roams the level trying to hit you with more fire and it can also turn your bombs into items by using leaves. You can probably tell that they really worked on the bosses for this one. They all seem more fleshed out and they are all an actual challenge to beat. Zone 2 is called Planet Fire or Firestorm. It's a fiery world with erupting volcanoes, lava and mining carts. It gets a bit harder than the first planet, but nothing that will have you throwing your controller at the screen. It's controlled by Golem Bomber, which was called Fire Bomber in the manual of the original game, but sure. He controls Dock Gun, which is basically a mecha volcano. He can turn his arm into fire and probably do something else, but that's all I saw. Zone 3 is called Planet Ocean, or Deep Sea. And apparently Bomberman can breathe underwater now. Damn, that's crazy. Almost like I could have used that before. Here they added some whirlpools that push you around and they're pretty obvious and easy to avoid, so uh, nothing to worry. There are some moments where the screen gets darker and I'm not sure why. It's not enough to make the game any harder, it's just a bit weird. This world is controlled by Pretty Bomber, which, by the way, shows up in the password screen and it takes off her mask if you enter the password correctly. I can hear you 15 year old screaming right now. She controls Gamma Book, basically a giant turtle with a water dome on its back. It throws water on the level and it makes the bombs move around with it. It also has another attack that makes some clouds go after you, but they are not very hard to dodge. This one might make you anxious when it uses both attacks at once. Zone 4 is Pyramid. It's a planet covered in desert and ancient themed. There's these guys that look like pharaohs walking around and hands coming out of the ground. And the pharaohs can really screw you up if you're not paying attention. They also added pyramids and there's a wobbly thing coming out of it. I'm not sure what they were going for honestly. There are some moving floors that when mixed with these tornado enemies can really get you off guard. The planet is controlled by Brain Bomber who controls a... a, a, a Mexican? Oh, uh, cacti. They are two separate enemies. One keeps throwing bombs into the sky and the other throws spikes around them. They also keep throwing their hats to each other trying to hit you. You might get overwhelmed by this one. They are not that strong but they sure cover a lot of space. Zone 5 is Winterland. It's snow themed and has penguins, ice, yetis and green gnomes as enemies. The only hazards you find in this one is breakable ground in certain places and these snowballs that can drop if you hit them with a bomb. Because of that, it might be a good time to talk about the Louis. And no, they are not rabbits, they are Louis. They are found inside eggs throughout the levels and here, there are five different colors, each with a special power that you can use. So for example, the green Louis can run. 
The pink one can jump over things. The brown one can create lines of whatever amount of bombs you have and so on. As far as I know, they were introduced in another game called Bomberman 94, which is basically Bomberman 3 in a parallel universe. The zone is controlled by Plasma, who controls Freezer Venus, what looks like a princess. She can throw rows of gnomes at you that can push your bombs and throw tornadoes. Uh, not very hard. After you win, Bomberman sings in his ship, but gets interrupted by a flying saucer shooting in every direction. It's controlled by Professor Bugler, aiming to destroy all the planets, so Bomberman go into his ship to fight him. This is Zone 6. It has robots that can shoot your bombs and make them explode, robots that can fly after you when they are triggered, and robots that spin fire around themselves. There's also stage hazards that can shock you, so you gotta pay attention to where you're moving. The last boss is of course Bugler. He throws those wobbly bombs around you, can throw bigger bombs around you and has a shield that makes him invulnerable while doing so. After you defeat him, he makes a Megazord of the 5 bad bombers. He can throw robotic arms that can also explode your bomb, so you have to mind where you set your bombs. And he can also shoot hearts that explode in every direction while moving. There's probably more, but he wouldn't stop spamming the hands. After he's defeated, Bomberman jumps out of the exploding spaceship and flies away. He's greeted by others and that's it. Final shot for the thumbnail and GG's. The music is probably the best here. There are some weird drops in quality here or there and you'll definitely notice it, but most of it is just really good. This one was awesome. It's the first SNES game to have the Louis, which will end up becoming a staple to the series. It's balanced and it has some cool progression in the difficulty. Not simple bosses that just move around trying to hit you with their body. Oh yeah, the battle mode. In this one you're able to select from a selection of Bombermen from different parts of the road. Sadly they removed the option to select the colors, but that's alright. In this one you can also find the Louis on the field, which can be very helpful. Be careful though, the AI got way better. 1 and 2 had 10 levels of difficulty, and it was nowhere near as hard as this one with only 3 levels of difficulty. It's the best battle mode so far, hands down. Bomberman 4 I'll get this out of the way already. I'll probably be biased here because I used to play this one a lot of my mom as a kid. It's the only game she used to play and probably the reason I got into the series. Here's where our problems start too. Most of the things I talked about when mentioning the story came from the manual of each game. Bomberman 4 and 5 however were never released into the west, meaning I can only find the Japanese manual to it. And here's a fun fact about me, I don't speak Japanese. So I went to this Bomberman fandom page I found and here's the story. Bagura's brain escaped after the explosion of his battleship in the last game and summoned the four Bomber Kings and Bomber Great to get revenge on white and black Bombermen. A lot of questions already popped up. Bagura is apparently the original name of Bugler, but it was translated to many different ways and the fandom decided to keep this one as Bagura. So from now on that's what he's called. But what about these guys, called the four Bomber Kings and their leader, Bomber Great? I have no idea. The fandom says that they just show up after being summoned by Bagura, but I don't know if they're actual kings somewhere or that's just their group name, like a Bomberman boy band. Bagura's brain was transferred into a robot apparently, which was how he was able to summon the Bomber Band. While sleeping on a trip to Earth, the Bombermen are suddenly sent back in time, along with Honey the Cowgirl and Kotetsu the Samurai. More questions popping up. Apparently they were both Hudson Soft mascots and they decided to turn into Kano in the series. Uh, uh, sure. We start in the primeval area and... Uh, damn. <laughs> uh, do you smell that? It smells like home. I just love how this game looks. Again, I know I'm biased, but damn, just everything here has so much personality, which by the way, is the first time the Bomber Boys have it. Well, at least on the Super Nintendo, I, I don't know about the other games. Again, Zone 1 is pretty simple. All the levels are prehistoric themed and simple to understand. However, there are things that are different than the previous games. There are no Louis in this game, instead you have different animals and... things from different eras. You can ride dinosaurs that have bombs that can pass through walls, robots that can shoot and slow enemies, weird fish that can pass through blocks and so on. 
As much as I hate to admit, I think I like the Louis better. There's a lot of variety on this one, don't get me wrong, but the rabbit looking pets that just wanna help are just classic to the series. At the end of this area you fight Hammer Bomber, who can swing his arm at you and stun you, making you lose random items in the process. Honestly though, not very hard. After that you move on to the second phase where you fight Dogun, a weird baby on top of a pot. He moves around very slowly and every time he's hit, he drops fire that move around the maze and ignites any bombs in their way. Not a very hard boss because of his speed. We then move to zone 2, the Edo area, or past. It takes place in what looks like Japanese dojos with different types of ninjas in them. Some of them can jump over your bombs, some of them can throw things at you and some of them are squids. Don't ask me. I'll take the time here to explain what these weird things you see are. These are bonus levels that can only be accessed with a second player. And still you will need a power glove for it. You have to grab the second player with the glove and throw them in, skipping the level and being transported to a bonus one. There's not just one though. Every time you enter one of those portals there's a different level. Some of them are simple and straightforward, some are kind of BS. I told you though, grab a friend to play these games. The boss you fight here is Jet Bomber. He has two rockets on his back that can be used to fly in one direction, killing everything in its way. The AI for these guys aren't very good though, so just look forward for the second phase of the bosses. In the second phase you fight Mechinder. He's a samurai mecha that shoots bomb from his arms. This one can be a little bit more annoying because of how unpredictable we can be with the bomb placement, but 10 well placed remote bombs will do. For the third zone you have the modern era, or the present. This might be my favorite zone in the game because of how it looks, but at the same time it's easily the most broken for one simple reason, area 3-6. You see these enemies? Every time you put a bomb near them, they run into it and hit them with a hammer. Every time they do that, the bomb turns into a random item. Do you see where this is going? It has some random alarms that, whenever they are hit, it makes enemies run around faster. But besides that, it's one of the easiest zones in the game. By the way, there's also some jail looking blocks throughout the levels that, whenever you hit them, it lets out a random bomberman. It's pretty brain dead though, it just throws bomb here or there. You can't even use them to go to the bonus level, so I don't get the point. The boss in this game is Lady Bomber. She has missiles that she pulls together to shoot a laser beam. Probably the easiest of all bosses so far. It takes so long for her to pull her missiles together that you can just move around her every time. The second phase is against Rocketeer Joe. He's a giant soldier that flies around, shoots gas clouds from his gun and missiles from his back. One of the coolest designs if you ask me. This one is harder though. The missiles work like bombs. So whenever they hit the ground, they cover the rows around them and the same goes for the gas clouds whenever they get hit. Not only that, but you can only hit Joe when he sits down on the ground to attack you. The fourth zone is Super Future. I guess Future wasn't enough. It's supposedly a robotic jungle, but I had no idea before reading that in the fandom. The zone itself is harder because of the level design. A lot of immovable blocks and the floor rises in places that make it hard for you to move around with enemies nearby. A good challenge nonetheless. You can also find one of the most OP rides here, which is... Uh, uh, this thing. It shoots music notes that make other characters leap and stay stunned for a few seconds, giving you time to set bombs around them. Yeah, the projectile is very slow, but if you're anywhere near them, they're instantly dead. The boss here is Bazooka Bomber, which... well, has a bazooka. That shoots fire, of course. Not very hard or smart, but the second phase here, oh god. You fight Santa Beetle here, which I'm 99% sure was not programmed correctly. It's a giant centipede mecha that can shoot web and slow you down. There's one problem though. Whenever it's looking at you, you will spend the hell of it to slow you down and simply run into you. Every time. And this boss has two, uh, let's say, modes where in the second one it becomes only its head, spinning its body around it and shooting webs really fast. 
So I assume it was not supposed to shoot that fast in the first mode. It does make up for a challenge though, so maybe it's a good thing? Who knows? Zone 5, Hyperspace. You fight each of the bosses all over again, one after another. Only difference being they take way less hits now. After that you fight their leader, Bomber Great. But sadly it's the exact same thing. The only difference is his superpower, which is being invulnerable for a few seconds without moving, which works as a stun against him, so you can go around him and fill the maze with bombs. Truly amazing game design if you ask me. You then move to the second phase bosses. Again, the same fights with less hits. And after you defeat everyone, you fight Bagura's head. It's Bagura's brain inside a mecha. It keeps throwing bombs that follow you all the time and after that, you fight only his brain. Which is constantly trying to run you over. You can push it back by hitting it with bombs and it won't take long to beat it. You destroy Bagura's brain and everyone is sent back in time. To the present. Why don't black bombermen wake up and they finish their trip to earth? The end. The music in this game, I didn't know this as a kid, but some of it is reused from Bomberman 3, which is actually reused from Bomberman 94. Still though, the drops in quality are gone, and I don't think there's a single song that I don't like or felt off to me in this game. Everything sounds amazing and it's easily my favorite soundtrack from these games. The battle mode now has a lot of stuff to it. You can pick every boss in the game, each having their own powers that can be used in a match. You have all the rides that you can pick up in the campaign. And Maniac mode is also new. It lets you choose the power-ups that will be in the match, how many of each, and how many lives each player gets. If there was ever any type of real competitivity in Bomberman, this might have been the game for it. Weirdly enough, there are some slowdowns in battle mode, which didn't happen at all in the campaign. Still, I love this game. It's still my favorite so far, with 3 being really close to it. And we are finally in Super Bomberman 5. Again, it was never released into the West, so all I got is what I saw in the cutscenes and in the fandom. The game starts somewhere called the Bomber Penitentiary, a place where they keep the fiendish bombers locked up. Terrorin, the new villain releases everyone from their cells in exchange for help on conquering the universe. White and Black Bomberman, again, go on a final battle against them. The game takes place in an alternate dimension created by Terrorin, and it contains the same worlds we saw in the previous games. Now, keep in mind, I did not like this game as a kid. Not because it was bad, but because of two things. Every time you finish a level, there's different portals with no indication of where it goes. The only way you can tell the difference is when a portal becomes purple, meaning you already been to that level. And the second reason is that Bomberman looked too skinny. My kid self did not like that. That being said, it was pretty awesome to play this game. Zone 1 takes place in the same world as the first Bomberman. You go through the same levels from that game all over again, but inside a new game. It's like a nostalgia trip for something I just played a few hours ago. They definitely made it easier though, probably because it's the first zone on the game. Again, each zone has a different boss and in this one you fight Bomber Wolf, a mecha dog that poops invisible bombs. You have to keep an eye where he throws bombs because they explode if you step on them. Zone 2, the Bomberman 2 levels. Playing these actually made me notice that I kinda like Bomberman 2 now. The levels have a different art style from all the other games, even though it's the one I played the least, it might be one of my new favorite few. I say few because it was the quickest area to go through. I don't know why, but I played 3 levels and moved directly to the boss. Maybe I was lucky with the portals, but I couldn't tell you. You fight Dave Bomber in this one, but from now on, it shows how difficult bosses can be. He has a power glove, and he sure uses it. There's a huge contrast in between the bosses from the older games to this one. And honestly, this one is the better option. You actually have a challenge to face in every boss fight, and it's not easy to cheese. Zone 3, the Bomberman 3 levels. Of course, I might be wrong here, but some of the levels look way different than what I remember. I guess they took a bit of a step down, 
Maybe because of how much they had to pack into this game? I can't say it looks bad, just different. But it sure was one of the reasons I didn't like this game as a kid. The Louis are back, but with more personality and in more colors. The green Louis, the one who runs really fast, now gained a little weight and now rolls around instead of running. The brown one became purple and now has a hat, and so on. I still think they are a better option than the different rides you had in 4, and they're even better now that each has its own personality to them. The bosses of the zone are Pirate and Subordinate Bomber, two pirate looking bombermen that throw an item at you that makes you slower. Pirate Bomber also rides a Black Louie, but that's basically it. The difficulty of this boss comes from being against two bombers at the same time. The fourth zone is the one I was waiting to play. Bomberman 4 being the one I played the most, I knew I could compare it to the old one just by looking at it. And really, some levels here are definitely new. You have some that are the exactly same as the original, but some were created specifically for this game. Maybe because they expect your Bomberman to be already upgraded by the time you get to these levels. But everything looks the same, with the animations and art style, so I assume they just ripped whatever they had from 4 to put in this one. Uh, that's not a complaint though. The boss of this zone is Iron Mask Bomber. The level itself is already a bit harder for having these tubes in the middle and whenever a bomb goes through them, it explodes all around it. But also, the boss does its best to outplay you and your best bet is wait for him to use his special power to run into him and trap him. Zone 5 is completely new and made for this game. There's actually two pages for the Zone 5, basically making it two different zones. I actually like some of these. It feels like Bomberman, but for advanced players sometimes. Some levels like these where you have to destroy the towers in order for the enemies to stop spawning can be pretty hard. And the enemies also become very aggressive in the process. And there's also these other levels with spikes that stun you and make you lose items. Definitely a challenge to get through this last one, so make sure you have some items before you're trying to beat them. And for this zone you fight the final boss, which is the easiest in the game. There are two phases to terror in, and after you defeat him, you get a weird ending that leaves you completely unsatisfied. And that's when I figured out that I got the bad ending. Yes, Bomberman 5 has a bad ending. To get the good ending you have to go back to world 4 and fight the correct boss, while having absolutely no indication of what you had to do or how you figure that out by yourself. In my opinion, it's pretty BS. But having internet these days you can find the correct route pretty easily. The real boss has 3 phases instead of 2 and it's still pretty easy. After you defeat him, you get a cutscene of Bomberman leaving the alternate reality with all the finished bombers and uh, that's it. Funny compilation and game over. The battle mode still has maniac mode, but it's a shame that I can't pick the number of Louis eggs. I wanted to make a section talking about all the Louis in this one, but I'm sure I missed some colors and I couldn't find a lot of them. You can also make your own Bomberman and fight other people in this one, setting their name, items, health and etc. It's a cool way for you to play against friends with your own personalized bomber. Besides that, the only real addition is for the new bomb that follows you around and mine is that go invisible after a second. Oh, and make your own character is completely broken because you can do this. The music in this game though, it's simply great. They got some of the old tunes remixed and mashed together for the ending and it's probably one of my favorite songs in the series. Overall, I love this series. I always consider it to be a series to play with friends, not alone, but after coming back to it after all these years, it's also a great game to play by yourself. Of course, I still highly recommend that you play this with a friend, even if only the battle mode. It is definitely worth it. It has some of the best music on the Super Nintendo, good graphics that kept evolving with the series and it's probably one of the best party games you can pick up. But yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this, because it took a lot of work. Uh, but if you did, make sure you leave a like, it really helps me a lot. And a huge thank you for our new member, Alexander Reed. Becoming a member is really the best way you can support the channel, so thank you so much to every single one of you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.